if her raspberries didn't wake her, a gold carriage clock and her mantelpiece would chime to tell her, to tell her the hour was up and the lesson was over. Ding! How was Madame Sloth allowed to get away with this? Because Greed to Greed did nothing about it. In fact, she encouraged it. Anything that brought children misery was fine by her. Because Ned never learned a thing about playing the piano in his years of enduring Madame Sloth's piano lessons, he would be sent off to have more and more lessons. One day, when his mother returned home from the fish market, Ned told her what was really happening in those lessons. Nothing. Nout. Nada. Nothing. Diddly squat. And of course, being a grown-up, Ned's mother didn't believe him. Just like all the other grown-ups on the island, Madame Sloth had bamboozled women into thinking she was the most fantabulous piano teacher in the world. Well, aside from her gramophone scam, Madame Sloth had a trio of nasty tricks up, this, up her sleeve of her long, flowery blouse. If a child dared to complain about the daylight rubbery, Madame Sloth would open the piano lid and shut the nasty little wretch inside. Bong! And that way, Madame Sloth could carry on with her precious snooze undisturbed. <laughs> And if a child attempted to grasp her up to their parents, in the next lesson, Madame Sloth would turn the piano stool upside down and make them perch on one of the legs for the full hour. Ouch! And if a child was so bold as to wake Madame Sloth up from one of her snoozes, they would be held upside down by their ankles and forced to play the piano with their nose. Ouch! 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 Donk! 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 One time, Ned couldn't take any more of this nonsense. So as Madame Sloth lay on the sofa snoring and blowing off, he shouted, This is the end! I am never, ever coming to one of your stupid piano lessons ever again! And needless to say, the piano teacher woke up in a foul mood. Without a word, Sloth walked out of the piano room and into the kitchen. And as Ned sat on the piano stool, she returned, clutching not one, not two, not three, but six tins of baked beans. One by one, she ripped them open and guzzled them down. And in seconds, like some kind of strong man at a fair, her tummy began making the most disturbing noises like a boiler that was about to explode. Oh, I need to go, announced Ned. Just one moment, replied Sloth, and next she shuffled over to the boy, and from the way she shuffled it was clear that she had a raspberry brewing in her stomach. Then, as soon as her as soon as she was sat down to Ned next to Ned, and she was close enough, she let that raspberry go. No! cried the boy and Sloth let off the most explosive blow off of all time. The force of the blast was enough to blow Ned straight out of the window. Whoosh! And needless to say, Ned was in no doubt as to how much he and all the children of the island had suffered at the hands of this monstrous woman. He knew that he would be doing them all a favour by teaching this teacher a lesson. But the question was, how? It may surprise you to know that for someone who taught the piano, Madame Sloth could not actually play the piano herself, not a note. In fact, she hated the sound of piano being played as she did all musical instruments. So the only sound that she did like was the sound of silence. Silence meant Sloth could sleep in peace. As Ned and Slime flew over the island, Ned spotted the roof of Madame Sloth's grand old black and white house. It was easy to spot she had a swimming pool with the shape of a piano in the garden, no doubt paid for by her ill-gotten gains. There! exclaimed the boy. The pair swooped down to the ground beside the house. Looking through the window, surprise, surprise, they saw that the piano teacher, if you could call her a teacher, was fast asleep on her chaise long, her sofa, snoring away. <sighs> Looking across the piano room, Ned and Slime could see the child Sloth was meant to be teaching. The poor thing had been made to stand on one leg on the piano stool whilst balancing a book of sheet music on her head. Presumably, this was some kind of punishment, no doubt for daring to stand up to the world's laziest piano teacher. The pigeons set Ned down and trans-slimed back 
into a blob. The girl balancing on the stool looked as if she was about to pass out. Her face had gone as red as a tomato and she was pouring with sweat. She must have been balancing her like a flamingo for nearly an hour. With a nod of his head, Ned signalled to her that she should escape. Are you sure? The girl mimed. She was clearly terrified of a lady who sprawled out on the sofa. Nod nodded his, nodded his head again. Tentatively and carefully, the girl put her other leg down and breathed a gigantic sigh of relief. Thank you, she mouthed before tiptoeing out of the room. Then slime he slid under the boy's feet and inflated into a ball. So Ned was just the right height to slide in through Sloth's open window. The boy eased himself through, landing on a piano stool. The slime ball followed. At first, it was too big to fit through. Then slime made itself a bit thinner, pulled itself through. Shh, shish Ned, let's not wake Sloth yet. How best to wake someone who loves silence? With the world's loudest noise, of course. Slime, began the boy breathlessly. His idea was so good he couldn't get it out quick enough. Yes, replied Slime, now turning back into a blob in the piano room. Shh, I need you to become the hugest orchestra in the world. Oh, goody, goody. And I want you to make the noisiest noise that ever. Ned wasn't sure of the word, so guessed at one. Noised. This was perfect payback for Sloth's explosive raspberry, which she blew off with earlier. In an instant, the blob divided into a hundred smaller blobs. And these small blobs, smaller than globules, are called globettes. One by one, the globettes began to take shape. And these globettes translimed into musical instruments faster than Ned could name them. A tuba, a French horn, a violin, a trumpet, a double bass, a harp, a set of cymbals, a xylophone, a bass drum. And last but not least, a giant Gong! Madame Sloth was oblivious, still snoozing on the sofa. <sniffs> now, orchestra, began Ned. Gather around her and I'll conduct. When all the pieces of the orchestra were in position, as close to the piano teacher as possible, Ned assumed the role of conductor. He picked up a banana from the fruit bowl on the coffee table to use as a baton. The boy had once seen a conductor on the television, so he had some sense of what to do. Ned tapped the banana on the table to get the attention of all the slimy instruments. Tap, tap, tap. And still Madame Sloth snored and blew off. Her blow-offs were so foul they could strip the wallpaper from the walls. And all the instruments in the slime orchestra turned to the conductor and Nod nodded and twirled his banana through the air. The noisiest noise that ever noised exploded into the room. A shocked Sloth shot up off the sofa with incredible speed. She smashed up through the ceiling of her piano room. Bang! Smashed through her plush bedroom above. Bang! Finally smashing through the roof of her house. Bang! And all that could be heard was Madame Sloth's scream as she sailed through the air. Ned looked up from the piano stool through the hole in the roof. The boy smiled to himself. Before he remembered something he learned, something important. Sir Isaac Newton's law of universal gravitation. In short, what goes up? must come down. And then he heard Sloth scream again. Not that screaming did any good, but it seemed like the appropriate thing to do. The lady was plummeting straight towards little Ned. And if the boy didn't do something and fast, he would be nothing more than human slime. Help! screamed Ned. Now he was screaming too. The piano! Thinking fast, slime transformed back into a blob and reached round the legs of Madame Sloth's grand piano with its blobby arms. It yanked the instrument under the hole in the roof, knocking Ned on his piano stool out of the way as it did so. Ah! screamed Sloth before crash landing into her own grand piano. My piano! she cried from inside the mess of wood and keys and wire. Now I can't give any more piano lessons! Well, you never did, retorted the boy. Ned, she screamed, I will get you for this. And with that, Sloth tried to lift herself up from her piano. But in order to kerfuffle, the gold carriage clock toppled off her mantelpiece and it clogged Sloth straight on the head. And bonk! Ouch, she cried. Another job well done, remarked Ned. Always a pleasure, replied Slime as he transformed into a rocket. Hop on! The boy smiled and hauled himself up. And then the rocket blasted him through the hole in Sloth's ceiling, high into the sky above. Zoom! 
I got the zoomies, howled the boy in delight. Okay, we'll leave it there for today. I wonder who's going to be next on Ned and Slime's list. I hope you had a great day today, you two. I'm looking forward to seeing all the fantastic learning you've done. And I'll talk to you again very, very soon. Bye for now.